Hello all and welcome, and I am Mid-Tough Philosopher. And in this video, I would like to talk about a story I came across entitled Highly Educated Women with Mostly Useless Degrees Shocked to Discover Men Avoid Them. <laughs> now, I've talked about this before, and this is something I've been saying for a long time, that men don't give a crap about how well-educated a woman is. In fact, the more educated she is, the more you want to stay away from her, but not for the reasons that women like to believe. No, 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 no. We like to avoid educated women because they generally talk too much and they won't shut up about how smart they think they are. And even if they are intelligent and not just yammering to try and convince themselves and you that they are, we don't give a shit. We don't want to hear what they have to say. If we want to hear intelligent conversation and have a conversation, we'll hang out with a guy. We just want to have sex with you. We, we, we don't want to talk with you. This is the problem with women these days, of course, that they assume that men want exactly what they want, which is a, essentially women want a guy with money. They want a guy that's well-educated because the better educated he is, generally speaking, the more money he's making now and is going to make in the future. Women don't seem to understand that they are not men. They want to be men, and they want to redesign society so that they can have the same kind of uh, benefits as men. But it doesn't work that way, honey. You don't get to go get a degree, get a good job, make a lot of money, and think that you can get a man based on the same criteria that uh, uh, essentially you have for what you desire in a man, meaning good education. And then you can get as fat as you want <laughs> and be as ugly as you want to be. But, oh, they shouldn't care about that. They should only care about what they, what I care about in a man, which is, oh, well... How much money he makes, of course. So my standards for what make a good man should be a man's standards for what make a good woman. A good woman. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now, I love this picture. Automatically, I'm excited to read this. But the article's a little long, and so I'm going to read very fast. So you're going to have to try to concentrate and follow along because I can read pretty fast. So here we have a picture of the keck that I love, of course. Uh, so let's see what it has to say. It's just a natural state of humanity that things that, when boiled down to their essence, are tragic can also come across as lulzy, I guess funny, I don't know. Uh, today we shall embark on the, such a journey, the old standby source of great material, the Daily Mail, once again, doesn't disappoint us. They bring us a story of women with degrees who also happen to be striking out in the romance department. Needless to say, the problem must be with men. <laughs> of course! You might look at this woman and think, meh, face isn't the greatest, but who knows, maybe she's a lot of fun to be around. Boy, would you be in for a surprise! For Natasha Hooper, the most important part of pre-date preparation isn't getting her hair done, waxing her legs, or buying a dress. It's good to see that she puts a lot of thought and effort into her pre-date plans. <laughs> uh, instead, she's more preoccupied with comprising a list of controversial topics, which she hopes will bridge the gap between her highbrow preoccupations and the more mainstream interests of her dates. What? So she's preparing a list of things to discuss? Oh, shit. Oh, hell yeah, I can see why she... <laughs> Would be shocked that she's striking out in the romance departments. I can tell right away that she's a barrel of the last be around. Good God, who wants to sit around and discuss politics and shit with a woman? Are you kidding me? These emotional creatures, they can't use logic or reason. That would be the most boring date, and you're not going to sleep with her, of course, because she's going to find something. She's going to find something to object to, of course, all that talking. The more you talk, the more likely it is that she's going to find something that makes her say, Ew, I don't want to date with you. Oh, I don't want to sleep with you. Oh, you like... Donald Trump? Ew. You think Donald Trump is good for the country? Ew. You were racist. No, I'm not going to sleep with you. <laughs> Waiting at a bar for a young man a few weeks ago, she ran through possible options before settling on a subject of labor leader Jeremy Corbyn. A surefire way, the 22-year-old undergraduate reason to guarantee an interesting deba de de debate. What the fuck do I want to have a debate with a woman for? If I want a debate, I'll talk to a man. A debate? Oh, you think I go on a date to be challenged by some woman? Oh, what the fuck? I got enough challenges in my work. Jesus Christ, what the fuck do I want to debate a woman for? Get the fuck out of here. You think I'm dating people to debate them? What is this high school debate team? Fuck off. I hate to break it to you, Natasha, but most men don't want to go on dates with women in hopes of an interesting debate. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got it right. And what was this guy's name? Let me check. So his name is Grandpa Lampshade, the person who is uh, uh, commenting within this article about the words written uh, about Natasha. Oh, God. Even the name sounds pretentious. Okay. Makes, you think, makes me think of pretension, uh, although it's a common and popular Russian name. Uh, anyway, pfft, never mind. Uh, random thought there. 
Okay, yeah, well, the 30-year-old office worker who sat down in front of her was handsome, polite, and smartly dressed. Oh, but that's not enough. He has to be a good debater as well. The minute Natasha brought up the labor leader's policies, any spark of attraction was extinguished. Laugh out loud, yeah. This comes as a shock to absolutely nobody except Natasha. <laughs> we don't want to discuss this shit. What the hell? How many of you, have any of you out there ever gone on a date with a woman who wanted to debate, who wanted to talk about serious stuff, politics, religion, anything? Any of you? If any of you have, raise your fucking hand, even though I'm not going to see it. And even though I'm not going to see it, I know almost all of you are going to say, yeah, I've had that experience. And you know how many of you got laid? Likely zero or very few. Because once you start bringing this shit up, these are the most objectionable things to discuss. They're the things that are going to personally offend you the most. And you're not likely to share everything in common. So especially in regards to political or religious views, so you start talking about this shit, you're going to offend her. All you need to do is offend her a little, and you're not going to get laid. It would be so funny if she wound up on a date with a flashy lad who encountered who countered with something like, meh, that's so mundane, let's discuss something interesting. Do you think the Holocaust was actually real? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. After 90 minutes discussing what she describes as benign subjects. Oh, yeah, they're just so benign because I'm so intelligent, a woman. That stuff's just benign. I could talk about even more deep and profound things such as reality, t reality TV and football, Natasha made her excuses and left, no closer to finding her Mr. Right. Uh, she doesn't understand how the dynamics between men and women work. There are no men that want to discuss those with you, honey. You are automatically restricting yourself to a life of single ladydom and cats. Yeah, uh-huh. I bet it was <laughs> more like the guy got up to use the bathroom and never came back before the appetizer arrived. <laughs> ah, with long dark hair, big green eyes, and that stunning size eight figure E. Ooh. I mean, it, it, the curves, they don't look bad on her, but I'm not so sure that they look all that good uh, uh, naked. Natasha, entering her final year at Goldsmiths University of London, has no problem attracting male attention. Uh, wow, it's almost like on some level they even realize that men are attracted to visual traits. Uh, yeah, but you're not supposed to like them for those reasons. Uh, yet they just can't figure out why they aren't interested in listening to them drone on about something they really actually know nothing about beyond what their professor told them. Yeah, this is the problem with women. Uh, uh, they're like dogmatic <laughs> parrots. <laughs> they just hear something to memorize it, and they think it sounds good, so they repeat it, but they really don't have a clue what they're talking about. It goes on to say, the issue, she explains, is the caliber of men she attracts. I'm not claiming to be Albert Einstein. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you think you are? Trust me. Anybody who says that thinks the opposite. But I can't seem to meet a man I find intellectually stimulating. You know why, honey? Because you're a fucking moron, okay? You're a fucking moron who thinks you're a genius. And all you really want is some guy to, to shine you on, to shine your ego, to polish your ego, to tell you you're brilliant. That's all you want because you're a narcissistic, narcissistic cunt. Excuse me. She says, nor is she the only well-educated young woman who says she is too clever to find love. Honey, you're not too clever. We just don't want to talk to you about these things. We don't find you interesting. And I've had conversations with women on dates who think they're so smart, and I'll actually talk to them about these kind of things, and then they will be left feeling like idiots <laughs> because I find every little contradiction and straw man argument and paper fucking tiger and logical fallacy and false equivalency and equivocations, everything, and then they're like, oh, he got for me. Yeah, I made you feel stupid. Well, so there are two things. They don't want to talk to you about this stuff because it's not interesting to discuss with you because they don't want to have sex with people who they intellectualize with. Or B, they're smarter than you and make you feel like an idiot. So either way, you lose, honey. You're not going to find anybody. <sighs> I'm sure that's what it is, darling. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> A recent study found more than 90% of predominantly graduate women surveyed were delaying motherhood not to pursue careers but because they couldn't find a suitable man. And she's not a bad-looking chick. Looks like she's got a nice rack. Probably a little junk in the trunk, but she's not bad. So, yeah, what's her problem? Oh, well, she can't find a suitably intelligent man, even though men, on average, have four to five IQ points more than a woman. That look when you have the face of someone's ex-wife and you haven't been married yet. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> Uh, some were so despairing, they were considering freezing their eggs as an insurance, po insurance policy. Yeah, these are women who lack in self-reflection and self-awareness. Uh, they, they think they're so intelligent, uh, but for some reason, they can't figure out 
the, the problem is them, okay? They, they, they're continually striking out with guys. It has to be them. <laughs> I don't strike out a lot with women. I, I generally speaking, no. I mean, if they're, if, unless they're not interested right off the bat, which happens sometimes because I'm not a young guy anymore. But you just persist. And if, it, really, honestly, I, I could give a shit about uh, a rejection. If you're a, if you're a guy who uh, has a lot of self-confidence, you know, you're on the subway, you're just standing there, eh, there's a broad next to Do you, you talk to her, takes zero energy. If she's interested, meh, she's not, eh, eh, there's some other chick on there the next day. I mean, talking to people really didn't take a lot of energy, you know. It's just if you don't you fear rejection. But if not, eh, eventually you'll meet some chicks and you'll build up a nice little roster and then you won't have any problem getting laid because it's just a phone call or a text message away. Uh, this chick doesn't seem to understand that. Yeah, she thinks she can be a bother or trouble, this intellectual powerhouse that she is, and we don't want to deal with that shit. We just want to get laid, honey. We don't want to have a fucking debate with you. Yes, this is what freedom and liberation look like, shiksa. <laughs> I like this guy's replies. The upshot, frustrated young women terrified of being left single and childless and men driven by a sense of inadequacy by cunts like this. Uh, don't you just love how no matter how they look at it, the problem has to be with men? Here's something for you to think about. Perhaps it's not because men feel inadequate around you, but instead they find your company to be boring, uninspiring, and unpleasant. Right, because we're not with you to discuss politics. It's boring to us because it's in the wrong context. We're there to get laid. Any small talk is just a price we pay. But debating you, it puts us in a different mindset, and we don't look at you anymore as some hot, sexy thing. It's like you've become a guy now. And so now you're not that attractive to us. We don't want to bang guys, okay? Men may claim to want educated women. No, we don't. <laughs> Who said we want educated? I don't want an educated woman. Fuck off. No, they don't. No man claims to want an educated woman. That's what something women say. Right. What women told Yeah, what man told you that? Did he have a conspicuous nose and was he rubbing his hands together? <laughs> was it even a man at all? Was it you? <laughs> I think this, I love this caricature, caricature of what I think is Anita Sarkeesian. Gigantic nose. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she tells you that. Women say that. Men don't say that. The guy goes on to say, come here. Let me tell you what you really want, Shiksa. Well, fear not, Natasha. With your okay body and amazing degree, I'm sure some man will be willing to overlook a life of constantly being told how smart you are in exchange for the shekels <laughs> you will make from your amazing education that is so amazing that men want to run away in fear. By the way, what is it your degree in? Like many arts degrees, her me media and communications degree? What? That's a non-subject. You mean talking? <laughs> talking? I have, my degree, by the way, is not it is not in, in a real subject, okay? Not media and de communications. I actually majored in something that was going to be my career, and it's something that actually has a hell of a lot of productive value in society. Is it media and communications? Just essentially talking, learning how to communicate better, which is something I clearly do very, very well, and I have no degree in it. What do you need a degree in talking for? You've been talking since birth. Are you kidding me? <laughs> And by the way, you can study all you want, but if you don't have a talent for it, you're not going to be that good at it. Oh, hell. Well, I have bad news for you, Natasha. With that degree, uh, all you are going to get are chads looking to hit and quit it. <laughs> Intelligent men looking for a relationship will quickly be doing the math in their heads of your earning potential versus the vast amount of student loan debt that will be theirs once they tie the knot with you. <laughs> <laughs> She's so intelligent, but she can't figure this stuff out. That men do a weighing of pros and cons in their head when it comes to getting with a woman. And if the cons outweigh the pros, we don't get with them unless we're some simp cuck mangina. The reality is that with women getting more and better degrees, in the next 10 to 20 years, women will be smarter than men. Bullshit. Let me tell you something. Education is genetically based. Women are not going to be smarter than men. It's gonna, it, it, even if things continue along that line, Women would actually have to become like men in every way, shape, or form so that the environment adapted itself to further engender greater intelligence in women, and it would take about another million years of evolution before that were to actually happen, <laughs> of the environment consistently uh, changing itself to uh, serve the necessity of making women smarter by how they interact with that environment. No, they're not going to become smarter in the next 20 years, you idiot. No doubt the world will soon find utopia when all these women flood the market with their liberal arts degrees. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, right. A female utopia of uh, all these chicks with uh, sociology degrees and uh, liberal arts degrees. Uh, they're so intelligent. Give me a break. And it just gets better and better. There's another uh, abroad <laughs> who thinks she's too smart. <laughs> And she's so smart she can't find a man. That's always the reason. It, 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 she's just too smart. And these men are somehow turned off by her intelligence. They're threatened. That's what women like to tell themselves, right? Because it follows the little narrative of self-empowerment. I know they're too empowered and men are afraid of them. Yeah, we're intimidated by women. Yeah, right. This is no surprise to Becca Porter, who graduated last year from Manchester University with a joint honors degree in history and sociology. Ah, history? Well, you can't do anything with that except become an academic. So she, clearly she's a liberal and a feminist. And sociology, well, that's just communism. <laughs> sociology was started by the a fucking Frankfurt School at the Columbia University in 1933. Started as a think tank. And sociology is their creation. Uh, they essentially made the study of socialism into a science and called it sociology. It, but it's not a science. They just put the name science after it. Sociology is communism and the teaching of leftism. It's bullshit, and anybody that studies it is probably a liberal and leftist and closet communist and is now starting a master's in disability studies. Disability studies? What the fuck is that? Studying people with no arms and legs? <laughs> what the fuck? At Leeds University. So useless degrees, but she's so smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this avatar. I love this uh, gif image of the little laugh out louds coming out of their own mouths. Hilarious. Sociology and now disability studies. Can you imagine the earning potential of this slug? Look at her. She's hideous. <laughs> Put a mansion on her. <laughs> yeah. The earning potential this woman has, like we care about money anyway. Do these women think that just having anything for a degree automatically makes them intelligent and educated? I have a hint for you. If you were intelligent, you wouldn't be getting a degree in potato farming. <laughs> or horticulture, <laughs> or disability studies, which is, or, or TV. You imagine that, people studying TV. Get fucking real. The sense of achievement I derive from learning seems alien to most men. What, what, the, the men are smarter than you. What are you talking about? Everything was built by men, invented by men. Men are the most educated creatures on earth. What the fuck are you talking about, you dumb bitch? Says Becca, 23. At school, I wasn't bothered about boys, but I'm at the uh, stage where I'd like to share my life with someone where you'd like to get somebody to pay the bills. That's what you mean, honey, but for some reason, you can't find somebody that wants a broad who prattles on all day about how fucking smart she is because she has a degree in studying people in wheelchairs. <laughs> well, that's understandable. I'm sure the problem you're having is because the guys you meet are very intimidated by your amazing degree in sociology and retard studies. <laughs> I can't imagine how it must feel to be so damn smart and intellectual that you go out on a date with a man and he can't even maintain eye contact with you. Yeah, he can't maintain eye contact because look at her. She looks disabled. She's got a lazy eye. I look at the left eye. The left eye is trailing off to the left and the other one is centered. So she's got a lazy eye. She's like, oh my gosh, she's homely, okay? She's homely. How many out there think she at least quali qualifies as a three? Is she at least a three? I'd say she's a three at best, okay? And that's without seeing the body. So a three who has a good education, she thinks, in studying retarded people <laughs> should get a great man. Yeah, okay, you keep telling yourself that, honey. Oh, hell, he can't maintain eye contact because he doesn't know which eye to look at. <laughs> Many believe the growing number of casualties from the intellectual chasm will be educated women in their 30s and 40s who fail to find men they deem their equal and are running out of time to start a family. See, this is the trap of women becoming liber liberated and, and freeing themselves from the house and trying to become like men because everybody knows that women are hypergamous. Women want security. They want more than they have. So if a man doesn't offer what they feel is more than they offer themselves, she's not going to get with that man. Oh, but, of course, she is essentially branding herself as someone who's going to be an old cat lady because she's restricting the available pool of men out there. She's essentially set her standards so high that very few men will meet them, which is really stupid because if you think about it, a person that has a fucking degree in uh, retard studies has about the same earning potential of, as, as a car mechanic. Hell, a plumber's going to make more money. And uh, so now she, what she does is she uh, uh, basically... Equivocate. So what she's doing here, so 
education now is somehow equal with earnings and his status in society and his quality as a man. So that's how they, what they associate education with. And so if he doesn't have her same education level, the, even if he makes decent money, she's not interested. Oh, no, no, no. He's too low brow. He's beneath me. It's nothing more than a form of classism and elitism and snobbery, which is, of course, what you would expect from a woman. Ridiculous. So many believe the growing number of casualties from the intellectual chasm. Yeah, it's an intellectual chasm. These women really just think too much of themselves. That's all. We'll be educated women in the 30s and 40s who fail to find men they deem their equal and are running out of time to start a family. (laughs) If by many you mean reality, then yes, this is observably the case. It's called the wall and it's real. You know how when you are in your 20s and if you maintain your looks, uh, then guys will still hit hit you up and in fact... Uh, may even try to slog their way through your boring ass pseudo intellectual attempts at conversations in the hopes of hitting that ass. All that goes away when you hit your 30s, and damn sure when you hit your 40s. When you're at this age, you're now caught in the trap. The young chads that uh, you were hoping to snatch, uh, one of, to make your dream husband, uh, are all out chasing the younger women in their 20s, and the older guys are probably divorced guys that have no interest in buying you a house and paying your child support out of their social security checks. <laughs> Oh, this guy's commentary is great. And we have another potential hottie here that we all should be interested in. Andrea Gould, 41. She looks like she's got to be at about a size 12. <laughs> From Frinton on C. Essex has two degrees and since her intellect has... Her, it's your intellect that's prevented, that's prevented you from finding love and having the family you long for. Really? I don't think it's your intellect. I think it's your ever-broadening fat ass and your pretentious snobbery that has stopped you from finding a man, this belief that your intellect is so great. And really, this is just a perfect example of a woman who got into university because she's a woman and not because she had any great SAT scores or whatever the hell they do over there on what I think this is England. And now, of course, she's telling herself, I'm so smart, I'm so wonderful, he has to meet the same criteria, actually be better than I am before I'm going to date him. Of course, she's a moron, and she's so stupid, in fact, that she's too stupid to see... (laughs) that she's not that intelligent. (sighs) Do you know why so many of these women have multiple degrees? It's not because they're so intelligent. It's because the degrees are worthless. And at some point, getting an education itself becomes their career. Right. Yeah, she's so lovely. Look at those gigantic calves and this dress that looks almost like a (laughs) moo-moo where she's pretty much obviously trying to hide her wrinkles and fat ass. That's why the men don't want you, honey. Goes on to say, but not bad, but her kids should be at least teenagers by now. Yeah, she's 41. Instead, there's still just faint images reaching out in her tortured dreams. 40-year-old, 41-year-old woman, lady, your eggs are fucking toast. <laughs> they are shriveled up. They are dead. The chromosomes and them things. If you have a kid, you have a high likelihood of having some kid that has Down syndrome or something. <laughs> That's what you're looking at for your future. Being a grade-A student, uh, she's been an obst- has been an obstacle as much as a blessing. It has limited my choices in men. How? How has it limited your choices in men, honey? B- I mean, it's really you that's saying that they're not acceptable. Oh, they're walking away from you, and then you're assuming that it has something to do with your being intelligent. Right, it has something. It has to do with something positive about you that they see as a negative. It can't have to do with something about your big fat ass and the fact that you're 41 years old. I'm sure that's what it is. They should offer a degree in self-awareness. Then again, women wouldn't take the class anyway. <laughs> During both her degrees, she studied English and German. Languages? By the way, she's, she's British. She studied English anyway, so she's just going to be an academic, a professor or a teacher, making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. <laughs> Where do you get holding your nose so high? I mean, that's not much money, honey. Jesus Christ. At Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge, then social, po- oh, social policy, fucking socialism, goddamn communism, bullshit subject at the same university for an extra challenge. Extra challenge? Get your ass out into the workforce, bitch. If you're so smart, make some goddamn money. If the person interviewing them had real talent or was just a troll, uh, he would have asked this woman what her yearly earnings are with her degrees in English, German, and social policy. Yeah, what I just said. Why, just the other day, I swear, I saw an ad looking for someone with a social policy degree for employment. I think it was a coffee shop. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. 
Yeah, she's making a lot of money. Throughout her 20s and 30s, Andre, who worked as a foreign languages teacher before setting up an online furniture store, struggled to find anyone suitable. Huh? She worked as a teacher and then, <coughs> excuse me, opened a furniture store? Well, how the hell educated is she? Big fucking deal. She, she, she sells furniture? What the hell? How are you some great educated woman if you're selling furniture? She struggled to find this furniture salesman and former teacher of English, a language she already speaks. <laughs> ah, sold furniture and she can't find anyone. Well, she clearly wasn't picking any of that furniture up. If she had, her ass might be a little smaller. Got her some exercise. Yes, because we all know that there is no way you could set up an online furniture store without a degree in social policy. Because asking this woman what her yearly earnings were, I would follow up by asking her how much student loan debt she has. I would guess it's a lot. Who's going to want to get with you and have two $250,000 or pounds of student loan debt? Nobody. I would probably rather listen to a black woman going about Jay-Z than listen to some woman drone on about her political opinions that are nothing more than regurgitated talking points that a professor programmed her with. Yeah. Women are no more than dogmatic parrots. Ah, oh, boy. My older brother was the first one in my family to go to college. That's been many years ago, and I still remember it to this day. After one year of college, he came home for the summer and was an insufferable prick. He spent literally every moment uh, of conversation trying to impress upon everyone present just how much smarter he was than everyone else. If I wasn't a kid at the time, I probably would have kicked his ass. My dad threatened to now transfer the same attitude upon a woman who actually doesn't even have the most fundamental grasp of the topics she's trying to impress you with as well as the knowledge that she brings with her... Deep six-figure student debt loan, uh, loan debt. Honestly, I don't understand how anyone with any self-awareness couldn't grasp why men aren't jumping at the opportunity to take the gamble of paying years of child support for ruining their credit. Just this amazing company. <sighs> so you can't even kick her ass. She's pretentious. She's classist. She's elitist. She's a snob. She don't even know what she's talking about. And she has tons of student debt loan, but we should want to get with her because she's so intelligent. Yeah. Delusional. It may sound as though I'm being overly harsh with these women, but actually I'm being very kind. The ones who are being mean to these women are the liars who keep telling them that if they just get a little further in debt and just get one more useless degree, they will find happiness. Yeah. Basically, the enablers in their life who are also miserable people and want them to be miserable as well. <sighs> Let me make this simple for you young ladies. No men, no, men don't want a woman who is a complete dumbass. However, if you think that getting a six-figure level of student loan debt to get some arts degrees conveys intelligence, then I'm here to tell you that you lose out to the cute waitress who has no debts, cute smile, and a sweet disposition. Men don't want women for debating partners. So what do they want? Well, of course, every man is a little different, but if you apply grandpa lampshades to simple rules for wives to your dating life and your search for a potential life mate, then you'll be in a good position to start from. Don't be fat. Don't be a bitch. All the rest is negotiable. Trust me. I'm a man. And that's it for Papa Lampshade. Papa Lampshade, I love the kick. <laughs> and I like your commentary. It's much like mine. Bitter red pills to the blue-pilled morons of the world who think that this big fat slob... <laughs> should be able to find a man <laughs> when all she has to offer and brings to the table is a big fat size 12 ass at 41 years of age and shriveled up old eggs that'll produce a kid with Down's syndrome and crappy degrees that come with two, three hundred thousand pounds of student loan debt that I'm supposed to take on. Woohoo! Where can I sign up? Yet more examples of delusional women who think they're all that and a bag of chips and they're nothing like that. They are bad investment men. It's like I've always said to men, do a cost-benefit analysis. And of course, the cost-benefit analysis is that you don't get involved with a woman, period. Pump them and dump them, baby. I am the tough philosopher, and I wish you a good day. Take care.